Gloria, can you hear me? I can now, yes. Okay, awesome. So everyone is here. Okay, let's get started then. So hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yasi Kurt, and I'm a liaison for College of Education and a career advisor at um, May Center for Experiential Learning and Community Engagement. Uh, today, I'm very excited is because this is the very um, the first virtual event we are having for our future teachers. So uh, future teachers virtual panel. Um, so before I jump in the conversation, I would like to remind you some housekeeping items. So unless you're speaking, please unmute yourself. So we're going to have, you know, clear conversation that way. And then second, uh, for our student attendees, uh, you can see the bottom of your screen, there's a chat box. So if you have any questions, uh, please, we want to, you know, answer all that questions you have. So please share with us so our panelists can, um, you know, um, provide their answers for those questions. And then la last but not least, we're going to be sharing this amazing conversation and session on our Tamisa Mays YouTube channel. And then I promise that it's going to be there within 48 hours. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. Uh, you want to go first, Kleisa? Can everybody hear me okay? All yes. right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Clarissa Tejeda, and I'm the Assistant Director of Career Services. So really excited again for a wonderful conversation. Uh, thank you to all the districts who joined us today. Hey there, Dr. Brzezinski, you wanna go second? Sure, hi, everybody. I think most people know me. <laughs> I'm Heather Brzezinski, I'm with the Educator Preparation Program and I've been with the university for many, many years now. And typically we like to have an HR panel uh, each semester and um, we're usually in the auditorium and face to face and able to shake hands and all of, that. All of those things we're missing right now. So uh, thank you so much for improvising and and um, all joining us today and um, still get the information out. I know a lot of the students are anxious to hear kind of what this new world looks like in terms of hiring and, and in the district. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you for this amazing intro, Heather. Um, Sandra? Hi, I'm Sandra Guerra. I work with Harlando ISD Human Resources. We work very closely with Texas A&M and are excited to host, to have hosted student teachers and host student teachers in the future. Thank you. Christina? I'm Human Resources. I am working in recruiting at Northeast ISD. Um, and um, being here, uh, we are always happy to have our student teachers from the local universities, Texas A&M, San Antonio, um, and uh, look forward to working with you guys in the future, as always. Awesome. Thank you. And Gloria uh, from SIST. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Gloria Wincoop. I'm the director of HR for Somerset ISD. Hello, everyone. And um, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for the invite. And um, we, too, uh, always welcome Texas A&M San Antonio students. Uh, we really appreciate that partnership that we have with Tamusa. And uh, many of our candidates, um, we have a lot of local kids and uh, students that are, you know, attending Tamusa. And we appreciate Dr. Brzezinski and uh, Julie Riedel as we continue the um the partnership that that we value um as we see the candidates from uh texas and san antonio as um paired and uh we welcome them for the year thank you gloria we are we are very lucky to have heather he, she's the best so thank you <laughs> um, our students are very excited for this great session and then we received a few questions from them but instead of like just having, you know, the interview type of dialogue, I really want to encourage every one of us to have more like conversational. So please jump in anytime um, you want. But let's start with the very first question. So Heather was telling earlier, COVID-19 impacted, you know, our students' lives, of course, like tremendously. Um, so let's start with your hiring status and then trends in your school districts. Can we start with this time with you, Gloria? Well, they have affected our hiring trends. Uh, not, not uh, we are still actively recruiting. Um, we are hiring 
um, I know that, um, you know, at normal, we have retirees, we have resignations. So we continue actively uh, recruiting and um, posting our positions. Our principals are actively uh, interviewing at this time. And um, we um, are probably handling it just a little different, of course. We love the face-to-face -face and certainly we are using a lot of our um, Zoom and FaceTime um, in order to be able to communicate with our, um, our candidates and having the ability to at least try to, you know, have a con eye contact or, uh, you know, so that we're able to, to interview them that way. But, but certainly we continue our, our standard practice of, um, uh, you know, working through our, our, our whole cycle and um, the only difference, of course, is that many of our principals are working from home, but much of our much of the tools that we have are online tools. And so um, our, our application system, everything remains the same. Uh, that is where we pre screen uh, our candidates and um, and then our principals are able to view and and select candidates from that pool to interview. So the only difference I would say COVID is having at this time is our inability to shake someone's hand. Uh, and and be able to to be person to person. But besides that, I believe our standard practices continue. Thank you. How's everything there at Northeast, Christina? So um, the same as as how you know Gloria described um, you know the interview processing. It, um, it is virtual. Obviously, we uh, did have to um, kind of. Um, um, change our our interviewing. I, I'm sorry, our job uh, fair participations this spring. So a lot of um, universities uh, transition to virtual job fairs. So that was real different for us. Um, and like Gloria said, you know, not able to un being unable to have that face to face and that contact with with candidates was unfortunate, but we are, you know, trying to be as creative as possible, both at campuses when principals are interviewing and in human resources. Um, one of the big changes probably for us, um, other than the virtual job fairs is probably transitioning to a virtual new employee orientation. So rather than, you know, um, bringing in new hires in groups of 50 or so, to our central office to be processed as new hires, we're doing a virtual uh, new employee orientation. So we're, um, uh, we've already had a few sessions like that and we're just trying to tweak it now um, in the event that we have to continue those in the future. But that's pretty much the, the, the biggest changes for us. Our needs are gonna be um, the same as last year. Vacancies will be um, the same as last year. Um, our shortage areas will remain the same. Um, so everything else is normal as far as that goes. Okay, awesome. How about you, Sandra? How is everything at Hallandale? It's, we are actively hiring. Yeah, we were in the office yesterday. We processed 15 new hires, which is a high number for us. Um, if I had to guess, I would have said we would have been pretty stable, but Harlandale is known for having teachers that's Stay around for a little while. So we have a high population of teachers with 30 plus years. And if I had to guess, I would say maybe the online learning has helped some go ahead and move on into retirement because we have a high number of retirements. And so right now we are actively um, hiring in all areas in secondary and elementary. We have bilingual and general ed vacancies as well. So we are always on the website looking for the best candidates. Um, we did transition to a new system. We were still kind of doing a lot of paperwork. This kind of forced us to go paperless and learn that, that process very quickly. So if you did apply, if you were a graduate in December, we do have a new online system. So if you have not applied to our new online system that went into effect, I believe February 1st, we would need you to reapply for posting. Awesome. So the students, you are hearing them, they're actively hiring. <laughs> it's because since very first week, the students keep asking, you know, if school district is still hiring. So I believe that you got your answers, students. So keep going, keep applying, keep searching. <laughs> okay. So um, regarding earlier, we were having conversation with, you know, Clarissa and Heather 
Uh, I believe that one of the, the, the very important skills, you know, the school districts will be looking for maybe the um, distance learning and online learning experience and then uh, the, how really the students, uh, you know, have this or the candidates have this skill set regarding, you know, uh, the teaching uh, online or doing this distance learning. So what your opinion regarding this? How are you going to be responding, um, you know, with this skill set or if you're going to be looking this skill set on candidates? Christina? Oh, yes. I, I believe that's going to be something that principals are uh, very interested in. Um, and then they will be open also to any ideas that the student teacher can bring, you know, to uh, to a campus about how to do that, how to improve that, um, how to engage the students, you know, virtually. Um, so I think any ideas a student teacher can have um, um, or any thoughts on improving that, I think that would be something definitely worthwhile to share at an interview. Awesome, thank you. Sandra? Well, having the background in technology has always been a plus, but I think even more so now. Um, but aside from the background in technology, I think just communicating that you're flexible. Because I think as we learned, things can change very quickly. And are you ready to seek out trainings if it's an area that you don't um, have the background in? How willing are you to just figure it out as we go? And because we can't tell you what next school year is going to be like yet. So just seeing, hearing from candidates that you're flexible and open to ideas. Thank you. How about you, Gloria? What's your opinion on this? Well, as with everyone, we did have um, quite a, um, you know, a, a change in our delivery of instruction with our children. Uh, certainly, it was a, um, a learning curve, larger for some, smaller for others. Um, I believe that our candidates that are coming in new to us from universities already have uh, some of that skill set ready. Um, they, um, as we know, we have a totally new learner, even at the university level. So as uh, candidates are coming into us, we know that they already are possessing the necessary technology skills needed. Um, of course, it's going to be whether or not they had any of that practice while they were um, doing their student teaching. Uh, it will be something that they will have to jump into, certainly. I'm sure their student teaching involved uh, direct teach with kids. Um, but, but it was all of us, you know, all of our children, um, you know, it's, um, the students, the, the teachers having to learn how to, um, uh, you know, from providing support to that direct teach to um, being able to um, feel confident that their learning, that learning was taking place. I think we all entered this, this time, uh, we, it's unprecedented. And um, I believe that during the summer, there are gonna be a lot of conversations about how we're gonna move forward. Uh, are we going to have a combination of both? You know, are we going to see yet another spike in this particular type of environment? And, and will that then lead us to yet again have to um, uh, help work with children online again? Um, my thinking is that our children are resilient. You know, the older they are, um, certainly we want to make sure that we feel that they're successful, but that skill set is critical. Um, are you able to communicate, you know, with your children? What are some of the ways that you could bring in, like you said, these ideas that they might come with? And I believe um, Christina mentioned that, you know, they will come with some ideas. So um, we're open to have those conversations with both our new and veteran teachers. What did you see? We're, able, we're gonna be able to also gauge what we, what we see this spring. You know, what, what, what did you see work? What didn't work? What, you know, and so I think we all, had to learn and jump in and and um you know do the best we can for our children but certainly i think many of our, our younger younger candidates are coming in with a like i said a that skill set that that could lend itself to then move into that uh, de um, delivery of instruction through this through this medium Awesome. I'm already loving this conversation a lot. Really great tips. Thank you all. Um, Dr. Brzezinski, Heather, so as you are the expert in the faculty, what advice do you have for students right now, you know, either here in this platform, join us already, or we'll be watching the recording, you know, the later on on YouTube uh, regarding, uh, again, the skill set 
um, they can, you know, the improve or need to have for distance learning or online learning? Any advice? Well, I think certainly seeking out opportunities, um, just as Andrew was saying, having that open mind to um, learn what they don't know, recognize that there's always more to learn, right? No matter how much experience we might have with something, especially in the realm of technology, because new platforms are constantly um, unrolling and especially now, I know um, just working on some of the things that we've been looking at, there are all kinds of new companies coming up with um, new delivery platforms for teachers to use in this environment. So I'd say definitely seeking out those opportunities and taking advantage of them, talking to um, other teachers who have experience on you know, either this past semester or there are, um, I know several teachers out there that have been delivering online learning for several years now and are very familiar with what works best because it's also important not only to think about um, how the information is delivered, but I would say almost even more important is teaching the students how to learn in that environment. Um, because it's very, very different than um, that face to face instruction, as we all know. So uh, I think paying attention to to both sides of um, online learning is extremely important and um, doing as much as you can to uh, support the students in their learning, work with your colleagues and uh, taking advantage of those opportunities as they arise, whether they're through the districts or seeking them out on your own. Awesome, thank you. Klaisa, anything you wanna add in? I know that you love technology and you're using several platforms, Kahoot, Flipgrid. So I don't know, like any technology, any tools you can share with students. Well, I'm a little biased because my husband's actually an eighth grade teacher at Somerset. So woof woof. Um, <laughs> it's been one of those things where I think also just being mindful of, you know, being forgiving on yourself too. Um, I think we are all in a moment of extreme learning. <laughs> this is a new environment for a lot of us, um, but just kind of maybe taking it a day at a time. Um, so like, for example, for him, um, he really had to deep dive into Google Classroom and to meetups, and then also having to learn how to record his first YouTube video. And then the next week, he's like, I'm gonna put an avatar for it. So he had to start kind of just kind of dissecting it down to where it was much easier to actually process it versus like, okay, in a night, I'm going to be a subject matter expert in like Google class, not a problem. No, it's okay. But being willing and open to learn it, I think it's a huge thing because academic technologies, they're there to supplement the instruction, but now even more so it may lead some of the conversations going on, especially as we're going into a new a year that we don't know what's gonna happen. So just being open. So like, for example, if you actually had some experiences during your student teaching during this time where you're like, oh yeah, I did have to work with Google Class or I did have to work on a website, a blog, put that down on your resume, especially, because I think that would be helpful, especially for the HR professionals to see that. And so they at least know that you have an introduction to some of these platforms. I wanted to add one thing um, yes, the other, the other, I guess um, segment that I think is so important and sometimes forgotten is that connection, that personal connection to the students when you are in that online environment, because sometimes we get so focused on the technology and on the delivery that we kind of, it's not that we forget, but we neglect that human connection that is still so, so, so important for the students. Um, so just being really mindful of, of that, having the conversations and you know um, that kind of personal connection awesome thank you like really great tips the students will uh, i'm sure that um the finding all that beneficial and then easily they can you know the practice you know these great tips and then hopefully they can pass any interviews they're gonna have in the near future okay so the next question is about you know um the students uh, are wondering how the hr what hr professions are looking for during the interview on candidates. So you want to start with Gloria? Okay, so how about you, Christina? You want to start? I believe the Gloria is having some technical difficulties. Sure. So um, really, our interview uh, process is two parts. 
we have a pre-screening interview with human resources, and that's actually, that's not a face-to-face -face interview with the human resources professional. Um, that is actually a survey that we use. It's called a Teacher Insight, and it's, um, it's a, a Gallup organization tool, and anyone who applies to a position for it, a teaching position at Northeast, they are issued a link to the Teacher Insight questionnaire. They complete that, and that's our pre-screening interview. From there, then principals post their positions specifically for their campus, and then applicants apply to those positions. So if it's a first grade at Wincrest Elementary, the candidate knows which position and which campus are applying to. From there then, uh, the principal will reach out to candidates um, he or she is interested in interviewing, and then they will have a, they will schedule the campus interview. But when we do go out, me and my colleague go out to job fairs, what we're, and we're able to meet face-to-face -face or even virtually with a candidate, if we're able to talk to them, what we're listening for just up front is the attitude, the enthusiasm, that passion for teaching, and then listening for the content knowledge as well. So um, those are some of the things that we're most interested in hearing about. At the campus level, of course, the interview is gonna be a little bit more technical, but of course, the principal is also listening for that enthusiasm, that passion, that flexibility. Um, you know, maybe um, I wouldn't recommend uh, being too focused on one grade level over another, but be flexible and open to any assignment. Um, so that would be, you know, my, my recommendation. Awesome. How about you, Sandra? Oh, I absolutely agree with Christina. When we meet candidates at the HR level, we're not really focused on the curriculum piece that comes at the campus level. What I'm looking for is somebody who has a passion for education, that you really want to be there. Because a first-year teacher doesn't really know what that first year is going to be like. You have to get through it to really understand how, how tough it can be. But they have to really want to be teachers to get through that first year. And we can teach them whatever they're lacking curriculum-wise. We provide so much in the way of in-service and trainings. Um, our principals are constantly in the classroom to try to see areas where the, the first-year teacher or the new teacher needs to grow so that we can provide that support. So we can give you all the technical pieces to make you into a good teacher. We just need you to have the passion to want to do that. Um, but yes, it would be the campus level interview where you're going to have the more curriculum based questions. Awesome. Thank you. Gloria, you left a second, so I don't know if you heard the question, but um, what HR professionals looking for on candidates when they are uh, doing the interviews? Thank you. Yep, I left for a little bit. Um, I agree with Sandra. At the HR level, um, we certainly are looking for that enthusiasm. Uh, yes, they've spent a whole year and in some instances a year and a half. I know there are different models out there by different universities. So we're able to um, uh, really see what they can offer us when they're student teaching with us. But if I'm just meeting you for the very first time at a job fair or via phone, then I I'm really looking for that enthusiasm for teaching. Um, you know, this it's hard enough to want to to want to go into the teaching profession uh, if you're, you're you're thinking I'm I'm looking for a job. Well, we're we're not really looking for someone that's looking for a job. We're looking for someone that wants to come in and make make a uh, an impact on our children. Uh, have that desire to to share their knowledge with them. And and certainly, I too agree with Christina where she said, uh, you know, I don't want to know. You know, I only want first grade or I only want kinder. That, that's not what we're interested in, in, in finding out more about you. We want to know whether you're going to be that fit. Are you going to be a fit for our district? Um, I know that you have a different uh, sizes here in our, in our panel. Uh, so many of us have different needs with respect to what type of candidate really fits our, our, um, our community, what type of candidate really fits. Uh, since Somerset is a lot smaller, we're, we're a little out on the outskirts of town. Uh, you know, we're looking for sometimes, you know, are we a fit for you? And so um, it's it's those things that we look for in these candidates that we say, you know, 
they're, they're ready to be in a smaller environment, in a smaller school system. And, and that's because they're, um, that enthusiasm, it does come through. You can, and you'll see it. And, um, and I had written a couple of things. Um, to me, it's, um, are they willing to learn as well? So I don't want someone to come in and say, you know, I already know this, I already know that. And, you know, even Sandra mentioned it. We all are, are restructuring the way we support our new teachers with our master teachers or instructional coaches, the weekly professional development sessions that they attend with their teams. There's a lot of interaction, a lot of job embedded um, professional development that takes place because of what it means. It's more meaningful at the campus level. So I like when I have a, a, um, a candidate that says, I'm willing to come in and learn, be a sponge. I'm ready. To, I learned this, but I know I have to be ready for that. And so with that willingness to just continue to be that learner uh, along with uh, the rest of the teams. Awesome. So pretty much three keywords HR professionals looking for at least like three of you. The one is definitely the candidates who will be making a difference, um, you know, in students' lives, maybe the school district and then their community. The second you're looking for the students with that passion the passion to teach, right? And then the third is enthusiasm, how enthusiastic they are. So how are we preparing our students to demonstrate um, these traits, Heather? Sorry, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I was asking, so I'm sure that we all encouraging our students to highlight, you know, these three factors is because it's really important, at least we do as career advisors, but what, what some advice you have for our students um, you know, they can, you know, the highlight these three factors to impress HR professionals, how they can show they are passionate, enthusiastic. Sure. And well, and I think that um, that needs to be a genuine uh, impulse or a, a genuine characteristic of the candidate. So I would say the way to uh, show that is to be genuine about it, you know. Um, let your experiences and uh, all of the extra time and extra uh, effort that you've put forth. I, again, I know this semester has been very interesting for everybody. Um, so it is it is important to communicate that sort of passion that you have for the field and whether you do that through um, uh, your videos. I know several people um, have made really fantastic videos, even though they maybe didn't have their students uh, there present for the videos. They were still, you know, that's able to come through with your passion for the content and the material, or whether it's through uh, individual experiences that you've had with the students or with the other um, teachers that you have been with. Um, I think really it's the best way to show that community or that passion and enthusiasm is through communication through talking with the HR people in those interviews. Um, I can um, add if possible. Um, there is one university who does a great job preparing their students for an interview. They are incredibly polished. Their answers are perfect. And we hear it repeated 20 more times during the day. And so what happens is even though it is a very polished response, it's missing that authenticity. And what is it that you are offering? You're just giving us the answer that we want to hear, but when we've heard it 20 other times, it lacks that authenticity, like Heather said. We need to know that it's genuinely coming from your heart, that you really do have a passion for teaching, and what is it that your connection is going to be with the students? What makes you special? And how are you going to establish that bond with your, your students? Awesome. Great point. We have students I work mainly with, you know, the students in College of Education. So future teachers, your hopefully employees, they are bright, but some of them, uh, sometimes they can be like introvert, even though you know that, you know, this particular individual, they are passionate about, you know, the teaching, enthusiastic, you know, uh, and also they want to make a difference in the, you know, the South side, like wherever in the San Antonio or maybe in the nation, maybe globally, right? But they may not know how to express that. So it's really great point. Uh, thank you, Sandra, and thank you, Heather. Uh, Kalaisa, any any tips again for our students? Regarding so, Jaguars, uh, FYI, you have Dr. Kurt here. He's actually your advisor. So if you want to practice your interview skills, 
please, we very much encourage to do so. Um, I know I still get nervous if I had to go on a job interview like tomorrow, I'd be panicking so much. Um, I know come on, it's kind of nerve wracking to talk about what you're wanting to do and what your skills are. So practice makes perfect. Um, I know, especially now, I'm, I know that all you are probably doing a different type of interview structure where virtual is going to be an experience and that's a new skill set. Um, we've been really conditioned to meet people face to face, but now how do we actually prepare for that virtual interview? So I really do suggest to actually schedule some time, meet with our team and go over what the interview process is like and then kind of fine tune your own voice in your responses. Awesome, thank you. Anyone would you like to add anything regarding this? I mean, all the great tips, but anything else? Okay, let's jump in the next um, question then. I would like to start with you, Sandra, is because you made a really great point. So we're helping our students, you know, the faculty, the staff to um, prepare them really well for that interview. But like you said, the interview is polished, but pretty much they're not showing that, you know, the authenticity. So what are some advice you have for our students, um, you know, to prepare themselves really well for the interviews you're gonna be uh, doing with them in the future? So you really do need to put some effort into the interview process. So you can Google teacher interview questions and start practicing. Practice with your friend, go over the questions in your head. So you kind of have a framework for what you want to say during the interview and you don't get um, stumped with a question. Um, be prepared to interview in front of a committee. Sometimes it's not a one-on-one -on -one interview. Some principals might want that. Most of them will have their assistant principal, a counselor, sometimes teachers on the same grade level. So be prepared for that. There's going to be more than one person that you are talking to if it was in person or if it's via Zoom. Um, and get to know a little bit about where you are interviewing. So whether it be the district as a whole, what is the district mission statement? Why do you think you're going to be a good fit? or the district, a little bit about the campus. You can find out so much just by going to the campus website. You'll see pictures of events that they've had at the campus. And just being able to offer that shows that you um, are very interested in the position, that you're not just going through a general interview, that you actually put some work into applying for that position. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Sandra, I've really received some questions uh, from our students regarding um, you know, the doing the interview virtual or in person. So what is the status right now um, there at Harlandale? Right now we are 100% virtual. Okay. So you would get the invite. I, I think everybody's using Zoom. It would be a Zoom invite with the time okay. your interview is scheduled. Okay, awesome. Any any um, the specific tips regarding the virtual interviews? I mean, you covered like, you know, the basics and the more general, you know, the tips, but any specific regarding, you know, like the Zoom interviews? or even phone screening interviews? We're all learning <laughs> together. <laughs> um, I think just be as engaged as you can. Okay. Listen intently to the questions. Um, look presentable on camera. I know we're at home and we're relaxed, but it's still an <laughs> interview. So maybe make a little bit of effort, you know, do, getting a little bit presentable. Um, I think all the tips that stand with a normal interview would still stand with the Zoom interview. Awesome, thank you. How about you, Christina? Um, so the same thing as Sandra, ditto um, on everything that she said. Um, but yes, um, you know, I do wanna reinforce, if you are um, selected for an interview, do your research about the district, do your research about the campus, the community, um, and then, um, um, be familiar with the district profile. You know, how many campuses do they have? Um, how many, what is their enrollment? Um, there may even be on the website a demographic breakdown of what the enrollment looks like, what students look like. Um, so the, all of that information is good to know. And when you're gathering and researching that information, you may also have questions about, you know, well, what is the community involvement at the campus? So jot down some of those questions too, because it is good to you know take that opportunity to get some of your questions answered as well, because we realize that it's not just you know the employer interviewing the candidate, it's also it should also be you, the candidate interviewing the employer, um, because everybody wants it to be a good fit, right? 
Um, so that um, is something, you know, that I would recommend that you prepare for. And then any question, maybe, you know, transfer the question to your experience while you were student teaching. So if there is a question that's asked in your mind, be thinking, okay, did, you know, what example can I, can I discuss or mention that actually happened that I really have experience dealing with? Um, so transferring that question to real experience is helpful too for the person that's interviewing you. Awesome, thank you. How about you, Gloria? What do you want to add in the list? Yeah, when uh, Christina mentioned that, that you know, for me, what I always recommend when kids are going to be interviewing is if you're asked a question about a specific scenario, always think about what what experience did you have in your student teaching or even as a student that then you're thinking about now, if you were the teacher then, when you had that experience, how would you then apply that now that you've been, um, um, you know, you've gone through this teaching um, uh, uh, preparation. So um, for me, I completely agree with Christina. It is always that personal experience because then you're, you're tying it to real world experiences because then as you come into the classroom, that's what you're going to want your kids to do. So as we're learning and, and you're learning and you're teaching, that is also some a, a great skill to have and to use uh, when you're teaching children because you want to personalize it for children. So if you're already doing that at, in your learning as an educator in your preparation as a, a as a candidate, then we will we'll be able to see that that's going to transition over when you become that educator. And, uh, and and make sure that your students are also well, tell me how this impacts you or personalize it because so Christina hit it when she said that because it's it's absolutely the, the one thing that I always tell uh, the candidates you're always going to be asked questions always think back how how you could personalize that particular type of question for your own experiences. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Kleisa, Heather, anything you want to add in the list? I mean, they cover everything, right? They are doing an amazing job. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So how about for students then? Is because like some of the students, they feel like asking questions back at the end of the interview to HR people, you know, principal, the hiring team, they feel like there is a weakness. So what are some great questions you advise them to ask back to you? Gloria, can we start with you? <laughs> sure. Um, no, the, I think, um, you know, they, they have to be careful about the type of questions they ask. You know, if we're not really yet offering you a job, don't ask about the pay. Uh, you know, uh, that kind of research you can do, you know, uh, on your own. Um, certainly for me, uh, it's how are we going to grow you as an educator? You know, um, some of the, some, what are the structures that are in place to support me as a new teacher? Um, you know, I'm, I know I'm coming in to learn. Will, will I be assigned a mentor? You know, will, will, you know, how often am I going to be observed? And, and then that's when we start moving into the how we support our new teachers um, through this process. And, um, you know, with in our district, you know, everybody's required to do walkthroughs. And so we kind of prepare them. Yes, you're going to get that support because it's going to be that immediate feedback, just like we give immediate feedback to children when you're in the classroom. We also believe in our district that regular constant walkthroughs and visits will enable us to see how it's not a gotcha it's how can we better look at what some of the things that we're seeing and how we can better uh, address if we see a need uh, associate that with your with your instructional coach hey i saw this you know maybe get get them some assistance here get them so and so we want them to see it as they are only caring about me as the educator because they know that if i'm better I'm going to be a better teacher for the kids here in the in in, in this classroom. So um, the only the, those questions are are critical. You know how how am I going to grow in your district as an educator? Well, and um, what are the supports that I'm going to have? Because I know I'm going to need them. You know, so that's what I would say. Awesome, thank you, Gloria. How about you, Sandra? What are some insightful questions you advise them to ask back? I agree with Gloria. You want to know how the campus is going to support you. I think Christina touched previously on wanting to know a little bit about the community. Those are questions that you can't um, find just by doing your own research. Don't ask questions that you can easily find online. Our teacher pay scale is online. 
our uh, employment calendar is online. Those are not the types of questions that we want to hear. But certainly questions are not a weakness. We're educators. We love questions. So just make them thoughtful questions of how um, the, you're really wanting to know. You want to know, how are you going to help me be successful my first year? We're happy to offer that information because we're very proud of what we've established to help our teachers. So Gloria is right. Those are the types of questions that we want to hear the ones that you've put thought into and that are genuine questions. Thank you. Awesome point, Sandra. Christina, you want to add any questions in the list? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree completely with Gloria and Sandra. Um, and another question that I hear, and I myself, if I were in an interview, I'd want to ask this question, but you can ask the interviewer, what do you enjoy about working at this district? What is your favorite thing about working at this district? Um, and then also, um, how do you define success in this in this job? So that that's really a question about what is um, what is it like, you know, in in the day of a life of a teacher at this campus? What does that look like? Um, what a good what are your strong teachers doing? You know, the ones that are are successful teachers, what are they doing? Um, so that gives you a little bit of information about it. You know, what does the job entail? Um, what are they going to be expecting of me? And so those questions, I, I think it's just very smart for candidates to go in and ask some of those questions. Again, it's about a good match for everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Really great questions. Clarissa, Heather? Any other questions you want to add in the list? I don't think so. No? Okay. So um, the next question is about portfolio. It's because most of the time the students, they really don't know what to bring to interviews. And then uh, they're like, should I you know, get any, my resumes, my cover letter, or do I need to get a portfolio, including my teaching philosophy, some pictures, pictures from my teaching experience. So what are your thoughts on that? Can we start with you, Sandra? At the HR level, we typically, it's a very brief screening if we meet you, so we really don't look through the portfolio. We would always say, save that for the campus level interview. At the campus level interview, yes, you're encouraged to bring your portfolio. It shows a little bit more about your personal experience and about your student teaching experience. So we absolutely encourage that. Uh, I know some people are still using their um, their portfolios, the traditional portfolios, and some do digital. You can even send that to the campus beforehand. Let them know here is my digital portfolio so that they can look at that when they have time. Because a lot of times they have only a certain amount of time allotted to each interview and deliberation after the interview. So time might be a little bit shorter and being able to live, leave a digital portfolio with them might be very smart so that they can go back and review that at a later date. Awesome, thank you. Christina? Same as Sandra, at the HR level, we're looking for a resume. Um, please include references. Um, and then at the campus level, a portfolio. Um, and digital would be great. Um, the only thing we ask about the resume is that you not uh, put a photo of yourself on the resume. Recently, there's a um, huge discussion regarding these pictures is because the millennials, they want to put their pictures. So, but I'm glad that you also pointing out that is because they need to hear from experts like yourself. They don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but how are you, Gloria? Yes, absolutely. No pictures. Um, I agree 100% uh, with Christina. Um, when uh, one thing I do want to point out to you, all of your students, and I would do that with any university or, or any candidate is many times we have students um, or candidates, rather applicants who don't complete the full application. And so um, we uh, we have a lot of applicants, you know, kids are applying a lot and, and you know, we don't have as many as Christina or maybe, you know, uh, Sandra, but we certainly do have a lot with less staff. And so when we have an incomplete application, it's very difficult for us to really gauge and, and understand uh, uh, the entirety of the of the candidate because we're we're missing things. Um, references, they might be missing the attachments that are required. And then there's their application stays 
you know, in, in a certain position uh, on the application portal for us, uh, unable to move through the application to into screening or into uh, the um, the screeners, uh, which are our principals. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend that yes, please, please look thoroughly through the uh, uh, application portals uh, for all districts. You know, some we're all different, and we all use different different uh, programs. So it's very, very important that you are um, completing your entire application. Now, as far as HR, ditto with uh, Christina and Sandra again uh, at the HR level. I, I don't. I'm not going to look through your portfolio. Um, and uh, but principals do like to see that. And and if you give it to them in advance, like a digital, um, they're able to then thoroughly review it prior to that interview. So they might even have questions associated with, you know, what did you do here, or what was the intent of the the lesson, or you know, tell me a little bit more about what you were you know, trying to, to get your students to learn. What would be your, your, you know, your, um, the, the goal of this particular lesson and why? How did you plan it? You know, uh, what went into your planning? So, uh, absolutely um, digital portfolio ahead of time, uh, because then it lends to uh, a better interview than just, okay, talk to me about this or talk to, oh, well, let me pull out my, my binder here. This is where I did this and this is where I did that. And sometimes, you know, there, there are time constraints to the um, interview at the campus level. And so if, if you're preparing your, um, your um, panelists and your principals ahead of time, uh, even better, because we're able to ask the right questions. Awesome, thank you, really great tips. Um, so we have about like 10 minutes and I believe that we received several questions. So um, let me read some of those. Okay, so very first one from Derek. Derek is asking, I'm still waiting for my certification is because it's in the probationary. So if um, he can still apply for positions with your school districts. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. understand. We understand that, um, especially now with everything going on at TA and um, we're always accepting applications. You can just put on your resume certificate pending. We understand that there's a process involved issue you a contract until you're fully certified, but we can issue you a letter of intent, which holds that place for you with the district. Awesome. So, Eric, go for it. I wanted to <laughs> yes, add something real, real quick here. Um, with the current TEA, well, it was really the governor um, has allowed the probationary certificate for the one year. Are the districts fine with hiring people, feeling good about hiring our students with that probationary certificate? Yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I assume so, but I know that several students were asking about that, so I wanted to make sure and ask the question. Awesome. And then Derek, go for it. You already got your answer. And then uh, what should we include in the portfolios? I believe that you already, you know, the touch base, uh, what should we include, you know, pretty much is like resumes, cover letter, and then maybe teaching philosophy. And then you mentioned about, you know, some pictures from their other uh, teaching experience, but anything else you want to add in the list? I believe we already discussed this, but anything else? How much is too much? Let me ask that question. How much is like too much? Like how much really information they need to add that digital portfolio or physical portfolio? Any? I can ask a question for that. We had our students, one of the requirements since the, we went virtual um, for the second half of the semester was for the students to prepare a virtual um, recorded lesson. And we have, an encourage, we have encouraged them to embed those in the digital portfolio in places, um, maybe not if it's a 45 minute lesson, maybe they're not the entire lesson, but certain highlights from that lesson. Is that something that you would recommend that they embed in their portfolio? I could see where that would be beneficial because sometimes in the normal setting, um, if a principal between two candidates or top two and they just can't make a choice we will encourage them to bring them in for a lesson so in this environment i could see where that would be helpful and that might be a deciding factor you know and i i think that um a candidate can include you know as much information or as little information as they would like 
the the principal will always or may have follow-up questions so just be prepared for that if you include too little information um, but then on the other hand do keep in mind the time that it might take to go through the portfolio so um, just some things to consider awesome thank you and one of the other questions is about um Google Classroom, actually, um, the question is, can we share our own Google Classroom to show the work we did for virtual learning with our cooperating teacher? I believe they are talking about maybe the link of their classroom. I couldn't really um, understand what question meant, but yeah, if they can share their Google Classroom. I, I would answer that um, if it's relevant to what it is that they're trying to focus in on, um, maybe part of it. Uh, again, like Christina says, you know, we we uh, our principals are have a little, limited amount of time that they're able to review. You know, all these candidates' um, um, portfolios and in, in their entirety. So uh, for me, I would I would recommend highlighting a couple of things if they have. Like, let me direct you to this piece in my portfolio or that piece in my portfolio. So that you're, you're targeting those areas that um, you really want to focus your principles in, 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 in looking at as they evaluate you as a candidate. Um, but not just here's a link to my Google Google portfolio, um, you know, because then what am I looking for? What, what do you what do you want me to see? And so um, clearly you want um, your um, I don't know what kind of release or I was I was thinking about what you said with respect to the video uh, when they do videotape themselves Dr. Brzezinski for a lesson uh, I would want to make sure that there there no students are, are are you know visible unless there's been some clearance or things like that but I know that that uh, other universities do also uh, require that their candidates or their student teachers um, record themselves and then so that they're evaluated accordingly similar to a teacher evaluation when um, using a rubric with their evaluation um, but um, especially um, just pointing out you know the highlights of what they would want us to to be looking for um, since uh, we're looking at a, a myriad of candidates and and certainly if like like uh, Sandra said if we're looking at just two more people now what are the some of the things that I would be looking for awesome great point thank you Gloria Christina Sandra you want to add anything regarding this mm -hmm. No. Okay. okay, awesome. And the next question is about references. How many is the ideal? What is the number for references? Is there an ideal number? Three is you, or one of them is your supervising teacher. Okay. Same, three, three is what we're looking for. And the cooperating teacher, um, someone who has um, maybe supervised the student teaching, um, someone who knows who knows the candidate as far as you know the um, education um, and experience of that person relate all related to to education mm -hmm. i agree i agree i have a question for myself as well is because i'm working with these students and then sometimes we are not on the same page regarding adding references page um, as a the last page of the resume or the separate what are your thoughts on that it could be maybe, you know, the different uh, opinions, or I know that it's not just one right way, but I want to hear from you if you don't mind. So the reference page should be included in the resume or the separate? So we like to keep the, the actual resume to about a page. As long as you're keeping the resume, the actual resume with the content to a page. Um, references on a resume aren't as important to me because what I'll do is I'll go back into the system to see the, if the references that were inputted into the system. Awesome. This is what I was uh, suggesting them, but Gloria and Christina, we want to hear different opinions if you. I'd like to add that um, for me, references are critical, but I, again, I would be looking for that supervising teacher, uh, folks that, uh, the, the, anyone that, that worked directly with you during your student teaching, uh, that was able to, you know, not necessarily the supervisor of uh, of the program, rather your campus folks that that were able to work with you, uh, you know, hand in hand in delivery of, of instruction. Um, sometimes uh, we have too many uh, references that are, are added that are not totally related to 
um, the experience that they that they went through, like uh, they might add a friend or they might add a coworker from somewhere else. Um, again, we want to target that experience as a student teacher and um, and then be able to get engage that objective evaluation of, of what kind of student teacher you were and what they believe you to be um, as you begin your career. And as far as as Northeast, um, like Sandra said, we we um, recommend that the candidate limit the resume to one page. Um, and then when they go online and apply for a position at the district, um, we do uh, request that they enter three references. If the references are not entered um, in their application online, then we would consider that an incomplete application. Awesome, thank you. We would as well, I just wanna add that as well. If it's an incomplete application, as I mentioned earlier, we have some applicants that fail to complete the entirety of it, and we would consider it an incomplete app as well. Awesome, great. I see one last question, but I believe you already, um, you know, the response that if they can include lesson plans in the portfolio, and then I believe uh, earlier you touch base and then definitely they can go ahead and then include but as a child, you're not really looking uh, the more details in the portfolio about the principles. Um, and then one question is very specific with Northeast. I, I believe that the student is having some technical issues. I don't know if you can help with that, Christina, but still the question is here, so I wanna share. Um, so she said that she's trying to apply, but unable to apply is because of like the, some technical issues. So the question is still if they can apply in person on campus. Um, so I, I, I don't think that's possible at this time to apply in person. Normally, you know, if, if our central office was open, um, and someone was there, you could go to a computer in our lobby and complete an online application there. Um, if, um, if you do have some, some issues, feel free to call our HR, um, direct, I mean, um, office number. You will get a representative and um, one of our HR specialists will answer and she can direct you to technical assistance or to someone that can can assist you. So someone is there answering the phone during regular working hours and they can assist. So that's um, I'm personally very low tech, so uh, I can't <laughs> I can't help troubleshoot like I wish I could, but but someone is available. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. So uh, there's no any other questions from our students, but well, I actually have yeah. a couple of questions. I don't know how they're sending them to me directly, but they <laughs> I'm getting them kind of in a separate chat. Um, <laughs> one of the questions was about renewing the the um, or updating the websites in terms of the jobs that are available. Does that happen fairly frequently and and yes. pretty current? Whatever is on on the websites, okay. And another one was about student teaching in the fall. If they're graduating in December, at what point should they put in an application? You said graduating in December? Correct. So I, I would recommend in late November or as soon as they have passed their certification test, they can start, um, start applying. Those were the only two that I that I had. Well, I had one other one about someone who was a an instructional aide in uh, NEISD for ten years, and they had a question about the credit received. They had heard someplace that every two years of being an instructional aide counts towards one year in the classroom, and they were wondering if that's correct or if mm -hmm. you had any information about that. So, yeah, I would have follow up questions about, you know, is that for TRS purposes? Is that the question? Um, but again, that individual can certainly call our main um, um, human resources phone number at Northeast um, 4070188, and they can, um, a specialist will direct them to someone that can answer that question. Perfect. Thank you. Uh -huh. Awesome. It was like really great conversation and I'm, I'm sure that our students, you know, find it really beneficial and practical as well. But any last minute, again, advice for our students, anything you want to add? 
before we uh, wrap up. <laughs> Gloria, Christina, Sandra, Heather, anything? We look forward to receiving their applications. We're ready for them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, same thing. And congratulations to you all. And uh, you've achieved so much. And um, best wishes to you wherever you land, whichever district. They're all amazing. And you know, you're you're there for kids, right? So congratulations. And I I would express the same. Um, you know, graduation. I know it wasn't what you wanted. You know, no celebrating the way we're used to. So. Um, but certainly the accomplishment is still the same and um, it is a difficult time. Uh, however, we we still have a job to do. We still have to teach our children. And and, you know, as Christina said, and I know Sandra has mentioned where we have everything that we want to have in place to support you as a new educator, uh, because um, our children need us, whether we're going to use virtual or face to face. Um, we we need teachers and so um, you know, you're coming to the right career, uh, and uh, if if you want to make a difference in children's lives, but but you know, congratulations on that accomplishment, and uh, I I too wish you the best, and we um, we too are always looking for great teachers, so continue applying. Awesome, thank you. So thank you so much for your time and sharing these great tips with our students, and then students, thank you so much for joining today. And then like all, um, all of us pretty much highlighted, go and then make difference. We believe in you and then someone is going to be believing you soon. Congratulations again. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.